Burgess here with Music Marketing TV and today we're looking at PSP's Vintage Warmer 2. It is a compressor that's got all that lovely analog goodness in it. We're specifically going to be looking at it on a drum bus. Here is the loop with it on. And then let me bypass it. Here it is with it off. So it's like the drums just totally got washed over completely. So this is really helping bring the drums forward. And let's go ahead and just take a quick look at the setup just so you understand the chain that we have. We have all these drums going into a drum bus. This is where the vintage warmer lives. There are several other vintage warmers, but the one we're gonna be looking at is this one. And without it, this is where we're sitting. And so we'll go ahead and turn it on. So we're sitting just somewhere between 9 and 10. So let's go ahead and turn this on. So we push up about a dB and that's it. And you get a pretty significant change for such a small increase in dB. So that's what's going on here. This limiter, by the way, just on the master chain, just so we're clear here, there is a limiter that's just eating headroom. Even with the entire mix going, it's never going to clip. So I, I just wanted to make it so I don't have to gain it so much up later in post. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. This is uh, pre this. So we're looking at the levels before we hit the limiter because this is just kind of here temporarily. And let's go ahead and set something like this up. So again, here it is with it. Without it. Yeah, maybe we're gaining a little closer to 2 dB, but you know, not a super big thing. I think it's a really worthwhile trade off. So let's go, let's add another vintage warmer here. And there's a couple really cool things. Um, I'm not sure because wh whoever you are watching this, uh, how many compressor plugins you've messed with, but you've probably seen the knee setting. And a lot of times the knee setting does not, is not as uh touchy as this one is this this you touch this setting big things are going to happen so let me go ahead and just show you so yeah knee is going to be a very important thing to uh, be aware of also we have a big drive knob and on this i believe i turned mine up a little bit let's go let's turn it up a little bit just because in general get a little bit of a boost drive it a bit harder into the algorithm if we go a lot, it's uh, it's like way too much, but just to show you. So I put a back line off, somewhere around there, not too much of a boost. And then again, I'm gonna over-exaggerate the knee just so you hear what the knee is doing. But these two combined uh, have huge influences on the sound. You can even see down here, we got plus three dB. to settle for a somewhere around 13 percent for the knee and then okay so we have speed and speed is uh kind of backwards so you would figure 100 would be a higher speed but it's actually zero is a faster speed because it's referring to tape speed so zero this is the way i think about it zero faster compression 100 slower compression that's what i that's how i just go about it so i'm going to turn this down we're going to have it be uh what well, we want our transients to get through i don't remember what i saw on before i did a lot of experimenting i'm just going to leave it at 50 right now i'm kind of impartial towards the speed at the moment so when we come down here we reach the ceiling which is going to allow us to do some limiting and i'm going to pull this down some to like around minus six and i'm kind of I've already adjusted my drum sort of for my mix level and then I'm going to drive it into this and sort of cap the drums off at that spot. And I oftentimes like to go back after I do this and touch up other drums, especially things that have like long reverbs or something on them, because those are going to be a little bit, those are going to be affected more dramatically than something that's very dry. So, okay, I'm going to sit this right around here. That's kind of my thought process. And we've got two release settings. Uh, there's auto and then there's long. So auto will kind of make decisions about the release time as stuff happens. I like long 
to turn it on and then combine with the release value you get some pretty cool uh, results so i'm going to bring this way down uh, to start we'll open up so just to show you i'm really going to push this thing low and then open it up and you get a really big difference like there's a lot more like audible pumping here more of a consistent sound you get a little bit more forward that com that compression aggression <laughs> the distortion kind of so i'm just gonna dial that back but if we go for auto change this up it, it like it knows because it's on auto and to me i i like to make these decisions usually so uh having this effect when we bring up the release to a, a bigger value is a useful effect to me so i'm going to keep that right around there and then over here i've i've done a couple of things in the mix to sort of make things work out already so for example something i've been doing recently is on uh the snare drum and a lot of my other drums that are not hi-hats i'll cut 16k and above if i plan to have hats going on in the mix because they just tend to play way nicer that way and uh, sometimes i'll even go a little bit lower than 16. so i'm gonna go ahead and give just a slight slight boost up here there is a multi-band mode and a single band mode uh, we're gonna go ahead and switch over to multi so it's gonna it's gonna look at things overall it'll be just a bit smoother with single band mode um it tends to just have a more aggressive tone this is something that you might just turn on and off and see if it makes all that big of a difference so this is single band and multi so not the craziest difference there so not a super important move but something to be aware of i have had occasions where switching this has had a huge difference so okay i'm just gonna give myself just the ever so slightest boost i'm gonna leave the low right where it's at it doesn't really need to be touched and i'm gonna leave the boost a little bit below the 16k mark i don't know this might be just a little too nuancy but just so i know it's there i guess that's pretty much it at this point what i also like to do is sometimes i'll load up another vintage warmer and i'll bypass the first one and i'll just dig through some presets and see if i get some ideas this is a great way if you've dialed something in but you're like oh, what other kind of effects can i get um it's nice to just do a little bit of perusing like the, i i quite like what that's doing to the mid-range i don't like what that one's doing to the high end Yeah, so you, you could go through fiddle and then just check out the values. Whoops, I, just, I wanted to remove that. And uh, come up with your own settings. So this is where I settled that second go around. And something to be aware of is I, I did this sort of in isolation. It's usually a good idea to have your other mix elements going. This will help you get a better feel for where you want the drive and things. And this is why I really like having a ceiling just at the end of the chain. And then I just sort of crush into the ceiling. You may consider doing this in, in parallel and then having the one that's got the punchiness um, just down a little lower because it's going to sum with the compressed version later. So that'll give the boost at those spots anyways. If, you, if you're really concerned about crushing the drums like super hard. But I think it quite works for... What I'm doing in this particular example. But that that's it. That's my process. It's not a super complicated plugin. It's really intuitive, very musical. You some of these knobs are just they produce such lovely effects. Like the knee and the drive have a um they have that analog feeling to them. If you have any questions about this, feel free to let me know. Subscribe and hit that bell icon and have a blessed day.